Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. It's part three time. We're doing multiple addresses. This is part three, so if you haven't watched one and two, go watch one and two. Come on back. We'll get back to it. All right, so yesterday we added the little type here. All right, we got multiple addresses for one customer, but what if these addresses are shared? What if Richard Rost and James Kirk share an office address? We both work on the enterprise, for example, okay? So you might wanna be able to say, all right, type in, start typing in that address and it, it just shows up there. So now we have to make this a many-to-many -many relationship. So it's gonna get a little, a little bit more complicated. If you haven't watched the many-to-many -many video, go watch it now, all right? Can't stress this enough. Go watch this for a detailed explanation of how many-to-many -many works. I'm not gonna go over all the details again. I'm gonna show you how to set it up. All right, so let's close this. Now, again, this is going to assume you're building the database new. You don't have to keep the existing data in there because you're going to lose some data at this point if you're converting from one to the other. All right, if you've already got this address table set up with customer IDs in here, we're going to we're going to lose it now. All right, so you'll have to do some fancy work with some queries to try to copy this stuff over. So that's why I recommend build your test database first, your sample database first, and then you can start feeding it with data. And once again, I have to stress that this method is not for everyone. All right, you might like what I'm building here. You might, you know, want to implement in this in your database. But again, the, whatever works best for you is the best way to do it. I've showed you a couple of different methods. This isn't for everybody, but some people want to be able to do this. So I'm going to show you how to do it. People always say, what's the best way to do this? Well, the best way to do it is whatever works best for you. Okay, I can show you multiple techniques to do just about everything. I am programmed in multiple techniques. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our address T and we're going to remove the customer type or the customer ID and the address type ID because this is no longer going to be tied to a customer or a specific address type. All right, it's just an address. Okay. And as far as the address type goes, one person might use it as an office address. Another person might be living there, like in the bathroom or in the, I don't know, has a cardboard box in the warehouse. You, you know what I'm saying, right? One person's billing address might be another person's shipping address, for example. So that information gets tied to the customer somehow. Now, how do we tie the address to the customer? Well, that's where our junction table comes in. So we need to create a table. And I like to name my junction tables this way. It's going to be whatever the two tables are that it ties together. So customer X address ID. And this will be the customer X address T. That's how, that's my, again, it's a Rick thing. You can do it your way if you want to, or you can do it the wrong way. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I do things the way I've done them because I've been doing them forever. Not necessarily the best way. It's just how I do it. So if you're going to learn from me, if you're just learning how to do this stuff, it might be easier if you watch more of my videos, if you kind of do it my way. One of the things when people post stuff in my forums, for example, or they send me a question and they want me to look at it, I can definitely tell people who have not watched my beginner lessons <laughs> because they got spaces in their field names and they got, all, I'm just saying. So, all right. So our junction table is going to bind two things together. It's going to bind what? The customer ID, right? That is a foreign key in this table along with an address ID, another foreign key in this table. We also are going to put in here any information about this join, about this specific instance of a customer to an address, such as what type of address is it? Address type ID. Another foreign key. You can have multiple, lots of foreign keys in a table. Okay, that table could bind a whole bunch of things together. It's like the force. It's like duct tape, right? It's got a light side and a dark side and it binds the universe together. I'm just full of pun state April. All right. Now, you could also put other types of information in this junction table. Um, anything that has to do with this customer for this address. For example, uh, a start and end date. If you want to keep track of a customer's address history, right? When did they start using this address? When did they stop using it? Put a start date and end date in here. And then you'll have a string of all of their address history. Um, you could have a, a field in here indicating if this is their primary address. Right. If not, here's where you put stuff like, do you want to send the newsletter to this address? All that kind of stuff goes in this junction table. Okay. And I cover this in a lot more detail 
in my many to many video and in my full courses. And I'll put links to all the stuff down below. All right, so let's save this as our customer X address table. Customer X address T. Primary key is the auto number. Okay, now let's put some sample data in here. Now, in order to see the sample data, it's often handy to be able to look at the other fields. So I'm going to take this guy and make it nice and small, put it right there. Let's open up the customer T. Here's my customers. All right, ignore the addresses in here. We just, we just care about the customer ID at this point. All right, and then I want to see my list of addresses. Here's my addresses I've got. And pretend, pretend we've got more. We got those ones. Okay, so here's what the data in this table is going to look like. All right, customer one, me, Richard Rust, belongs to address one. And that is his what type? We need the type table too. Where's the types? All right, and let's say that is my physical address, three. Okay, customer one belongs to address two. And that's my P.O. box. See how this works? All right. Jean-Luc Picard, customer four, belongs to address one. And that is also his physical address. See how two people can share the same address now because this table binds these all together. Make sense? Okay. Now what I need is a way where I can open up a customer's record and then add an address for them and start off by either typing it in or picking an address from a list because it'll already, it possibly could already be in the table, right? I want to see a list of addresses like this for each of my customers. Here's me. Here's my addresses. And yes, it's easier for doing this. It's easier to just toss all those together into a single address field like that. Because now if I go to a different customer like Deanna Troy, I start typing in her address, one, two, three. Oh, I'm looking for one, two, three Main Street. There it is right there. I just pick it from the list. See how this is going to work? And yes, you could do more advanced searches like searching for the street name or the city or all that stuff. And we might do some of that in the extended cut. But let me show you how to do this. This is the easy part. All right, so close all these down. Okay, now we're going to make it. Oops, save changes. Yeah, okay, fine. We're going to make a query that's going to basically have all of the addresses in one field. That way we can see them, all the address parts, I mean, in one field. That way we can see them together in a combo box when I open the whole thing up, just like I showed you in those previews a second ago. So let's create a query. We're just going to need the fields from the address table. All right, I want address ID, and now I'm going to mesh together the rest of these fields into one. All right, right here. In fact, I'm going to zoom in so you can see it better. Oh, my zoom box is messed up. Let me move it. There it is. There it is. Okay. I'm going to be able to see all this stuff. All right. Here's my zoom box. So we're going to call this bad boy. Let's call this uh, the full address. This is going to be address and a space. And if you don't know how to use string concatenation or how to create calculated query fields, I've got videos on those. I assume most of you are probably past that point. But if you haven't, if you don't know what I'm doing right now, I'll put links down below. All right. Address and then a space, and then the city, and then the space, and then the state, and then a space, and then the zip, and then a, I don't know if you're in other countries, you might use postal code or whatever, and then country. Basically, I'm just smashing these all together with a space between them. You want to put commas in there? Fine. You can put commas, whatever you want it to look like. Okay? Hit OK. There's your calculated query field. Now, if I run this, this is what it's going to look like when I drop the box down. Okay, so you'll be able to pick that from a list or start typing in a new one. All right, let's save this as my address Q. Okay, now we've got something that we can come and put in here as a combo box so I could pick from an existing address. And we'll do that in tomorrow's video, part four. So stick around, or stick around, tune in tomorrow. I <laughs> forgot my line there. What's my line? What's my line? Tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. <laughs> or members, yes, I'm going to be recording it in just a few minutes. Um, but yeah, what we'll cover in the next part. So that's going to be your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Oh, wait, someone's beaming in. <laughs> yeah. That's my hourly chime. It's actually, it's time to go walk the dogs too. So live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part four. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. 
Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down at the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the Tech Help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover 
lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just Access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.